welcome to podcast number three from Carp Couch Crew, first of 2016. Uh, I'm Russ from Rec Media, and we're here with Phil, the other half Ooh. of Rec Media, and John from Degenerate Gamers. Hello. Cool. So, um, big thing happened sort of last week, I think it was, uh, PSN going down. Um, for me, that was a massive, a massive thing. Um, I mean, I, I found myself locked out of games, which is a you know real pain. Did you guys get affected by that at all, or you know, did you know it was the whole day, wasn't it? I think it was out for. Yeah, um, I can't remember when, but yeah, there was definitely like one day after work, we were going to watch um, some shows on uh, the all four, but like we couldn't even get on that. Like everything seemed to be down. Like we managed to get on Netflix, and that was it. Yeah, my 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 Spotify was down as well. Um, basically, any, anything that, that needed PSN login was just completely out of the question. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's one of them things. I'm, I'm glad they don't happen too often, but when they do happen, especially when you've set, side, uh, set time aside to sort of sit down, play games, or watch movies or whatever, and then you can't do it, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. Yeah, well, every time it happens, I, I instantly panic that it's going to be like that time. Um, oh, Christmas. Ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Russ just getting stuck into Killzone 3 and then, boop, it's like a month Ooh. or whatever it was out. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing that sort of annoyed me about it is the their sort of initial message. So there's no... like All, all it said was, for me at least, that the PlayStation Network's under maintenance. Yeah, but to me, like, they, surely can they say that because it's not under maintenance? You know, it's under attack at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Slight but difference. I know yeah. they don't want to come out straight away and sort of say, "Oh no, we're under attack." It's you know, panic, everyone up in arms. Was that definitely what like... happened? Then? Say that again. Was it definitely under attack? Because I didn't actually look into what it was. Yeah, it was that, I don't know what the name of that group is, but the people who always claim the lizard, whatever their names are. Oh, was it them again, was it? I think, yeah, and it was just the usual post-Christmas, everyone's trying to play games, and it's sort of, obviously, a lot of people will have PlayStation's Christmas, and I think it's just a seasonal thing, it's a popular time for PlayStation, so... The thing is, what what I don't understand is, well, two things, one, like... That's old now. Like it's been done once, and then it's sort of. If it, it, it's, I think it's in the realms. I mean, I'm don't get me wrong. I'm no hacker, and I don't ever want to be in that sort of community. But it's been done once, so if it was done again, it'd just be like, oh, they've done it again. I'm like, great. But secondly, like it's just. I don't know. How to, I don't know how to like. I don't know how to explain it. It's just pathetic. What's the point? Yeah, just yeah, just like and. Like, okay, that, that time they did it over Christmas, there was like a whole hoo-ha, and you sort of think, well, you know, Sony, like a multi-billion like, dollar corporation, how can you not defend against this sort of stuff? Like I said, I'm no server tech, I don't know how it all works, but it's just it's just pathetic now. It's like, it's been done, dude. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're just going to DDoS stuff now, like DDoS is for like kids in nappies, I think, in that sort of area of the world. Mm, so, yeah. It, I think the, the thing as well is these days, obviously, this new generation of console, well I guess it's not really new, it's the current generation now, um, the Xbox One and PS4, they require connection. You know, you can use them obviously offline, but the way that the services that they run are going, you, you pretty much do need a connection to, to do it. If you get me, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Xbox One came out and there was the whole thing about you have to have an internet connection for it to, to run full stop, and everyone was up in arms and thought, no, this is crazy. You know, we need to be able to play it offline. So they backtracked on that, and that was a big thing. But within two years of the consoles coming out, we find that even though the console will run offline, you really can't do much with it no. without an internet connection or without a connection to, you know, Xbox Live or PSN. Yeah, it's um, it it kind of it kind of holds you to ransom on that on that part. I mean, I know you. You guys use a lot of um, uh, sort of digital downloaded games, whereas I'm more of a yeah. disc-based player. But I mean, I do have some digital games, um, and if they're not available because they need some form of verification or need you to sign in to play them in the first place, then they've literally got you by the balls. I mean, <laughs> if you can't, 
that, that's my that's my toss up between disc based and digital. Really, like I'd always prefer to have a physical copy of the game for that reason. Um, but what you're supposed to do, there's nothing you can do. And then obviously you, you you go on Twitter and you look towards the support sites and they say, oh yeah, like we're really sorry for the inconvenience. Like here's like a brick pack response, like for the next ten hours or whatever it was. Like we're just gonna say yeah, we're working on it. Why don't they just say like if they can say it? Why don't they just say um, like yeah, it's like we've been attacked. It's going to be five hours roughly until we get it back up. Here's here's a time frame. We're going to be a bit more transparent with it, mm-hmm. rather than just going all oh, like oh yeah, it could be any time. Because I think that's the worst part, and they're not knowing. Yeah, well, it comes back to what, like how I said. Every time it happens, I'm just instantly like, oh, is this going to be another month? But. But when they just oh, say that time, yeah, oh, that's what I mean. you thought about that time that the, yeah. the first time it happened. That's what I mean. Yeah, um, that was bad. Like, <laughs> when when they aren't as on trans there aren't transparency as you say, like every time it's just like oh yeah, it's just under maintenance. So like, every time I think, well, there was that time where they said that, and then four months later it was still under maintenance. Like it's just nice <laughs> yeah, to know but, if it is as big as bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I, I, put, I put the PlayStation Store on. I tend to, that's the first thing I do a lot of the time when I turn my PlayStation on, because I just want to see deals and that sort of thing. And it came up and said, under maintenance. And the, my initial thought was, okay, I'll come back in an hour. Because maintenance, you know, it shouldn't take a massive, massive period of time. You shut down your server for an hour, I guess. Again, I'm not in this area, but I'd say an hour or so being down, do their bit, and, and crack on. So to say that it's under maintenance to me is really misconcerting because it actually took sort of 30 hours or whatever it was down for. So um, and going back to the games, I mean, I was fell victim of that as well. Just about 95% of the games I've got are digital, and I couldn't play a single one of them. Um, and as Phil said, even like the music, the video streaming and as you said John the, the Spotify so like mm-hmm. almost the games the movies and TV and the music sort of the three things you'd use your console for all now really require um, an internet okay. connection uh, uh, yeah. unless you have the physical copy but with the way media in general is going so movies and music and games it's all becoming digital and that's just sort of it's the digital future Mm-hmm. Um, and that brings us on to the next point of sort of what we've got down is um, about PS Now. Have either of you two used PS Now's streaming service? Yeah, well, I was looking at it just the other day, and they mentioned that you could have a seven-day free trial, and I thought, well, it's a free trial, what the hell, so I'll give it a go. And I must admit, I'm really impressed. I am really impressed. Now, granted, they are PlayStation 3 games, and um, at the present moment, the library, they've got over 100 titles and there is a lot of indie games and you get PSN games in there as well. But I'm, I'm impressed with my free trial so far, I'm impressed with the amount of games that I'm, I'm looking to play. I mean, you've got Bioshock uh, Infinity, uh, Inf- Infinite, or which, whatever the last one was, I mean, that's a long game. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, got some good con- that's got some good content to it. Um, and we're talking, you know, full, full screen, streamed, and the stream is seamless. I was expecting jumps, even in the PlayStation Vita. That's one of the reasons why I got it. I thought, well, that's great. If I get this PS Now, I can play better games on my PlayStation Vita. All you've got to do is get over the whole control issue that I have with it. But other than that, um, so far, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm really impressed. But it did raise a question, thinking, well, pretty soon, I'm certain you're, not, you're never going to own a game. Not in this console generation, but I think the next console generation, you won't own games. You'll just... Subscribe. Mm. So you might. I mean, and maybe later on down the lines, you'll subscribe to EA. I mean, I know that's already a thing. It, it uh, is already kind of like that because every time, if you ever buy a game from a store online, you don't own the rights to that game, and they still have the right to take mm-hmm. it away from you at any point. So I think we're already at that point where we don't actually own any of the games we buy unless you buy a disc, same as you. A, a physical copy. Yeah, physical yeah. copy. But, um, yeah. I think most people probably do. Load now, I'd say. So I think we're already pretty much there. Yeah, well, when, when it first, oh. sort of when the sort of online stores first became really accessible, um, sort of towards the end of the PS3, and obviously with the PS4, the store becomes a lot more streamlined and accessible. 
the games were still sort of 10, 15 pounds more expensive to buy digitally. Mm. So it, it seemed crazy to me that you they didn't have to go to the process of manufacturing a box and a disc and a, and a cover sheet and all that sort of stuff and a manual. Um, but it was still ex- it was cheaper to do that way. But now I think it's sort of slowly flipping on its head, and you can actually find digital versions of games cheaper than the disc-based version. And so it should. And so it should be though. Like you said, there's no. They, they you know, once they've got the files, they're literally selling things at pure profit. Mm. There's no outlay. There's no. There's no discs. I mean, I, I'm from the old school, as I'm sure you guys are. I used to love. Uh, in the old days, getting manuals in games. You know, you'd just sit there, you'd, you'd buy the game, you'd probably go into town, buy the game, you'd sit on the bus on the way home, you'd read the manual. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's exactly. On the way home from college, I'd have gone to exactly. game, and I'd, I'd peel off a little game um, guarantee <laughs> thing, open it up, grab the, uh, what's it, I'd grab the manual, just read the manual, even if I didn't exactly. want to or need to. It was just this little bit of literature that sort of, was quite a cool thing to read, and yeah. a lot of the time you is, can get them, but it's the, obviously it's just a digital version of it, and it's not a PDF, and it's not quite the same. I think my so favourite my, thing about the manuals sorry. was how every single one had the bit at the start, which told you the layout of your controller, which told you that the X button was the X button, and the circle yeah, button yeah. was the circle <laughs> button, and it just went through like, every single one, like really kind of like, I, I know, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you worried that they, they feel like they have to put that sort of thing in. But it wasn't even like they didn't have the like the the triangle button on the controller, the picture with a, a line, and then it said the word triangle. Mm. A lot of the time, it would be the little circle with the triangle, and then the line, and then the little, <laughs> the little circle with the triangle. I know like, like, <laughs> because that's what you're pointing to. Like it didn't make sense. Yeah, crazy. I um some games had really good manuals though. They'd have like um like uh, bios of the main characters and like a bit yeah. of story or something like that. And that was what you're really looking for. If you got a game with a bit of a shoddy manual, you're always a bit disappointed. I felt. Well, but there's none Ma- of that. Metal Gear always stands out with their trickery of like, oh yeah, you need to get the codec off the back of the manual or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're sort of all the way back on the PS1. Yeah. <laughs> Um, long, so, long time one, gone. so just sort of just thinking of manuals as well. Like one thing we're going to miss out on is special editions. Um, obviously, special edition now is special edition or the deluxe or the super deluxe or the special super deluxe, where you get varying amounts of DLC paid for in advance. That's crap. I hate um, that. Which is crap. Um, oh, so, so bad. What I mean, obviously, special edition used to mean you'd get certain things with the game, physical objects. I mean, what's the most you guys have ever spent on a special edition just for the the bits and bobs that comes with it? Uh, I think that I actually bought the Child of Light special edition, um, yeah. which was quite good. It, it came with uh, it came with like a little key ring of like the little wispy thing. And I, I've, I've never actually gone crazy and bought loads, of, and I like, spent loads, but I've seen them, obviously... So yeah, especially yeah. The, the Assassin's Creed Unity one, I think the, the actual special edition was worth more than the actual content of the game, the game itself. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you got like a little statue and uh, I don't know. Yeah. Not, they've not really been my thing, although I would have got the Pip-Boy edition had they been around. I'd be sitting yeah. there with my, oh, pip, my, pip, my phone and my Pip-Boy. <laughs> I'm but still like, really annoyed I, I didn't get that. I Phil wants to show off a bit, so... Um, so for me it was 130, I think it was. 150. Yeah, it was something like that, but for the uh, the Skyrim special edition, uh... yeah. <laughs> I did it. It happened. I didn't regret it. <laughs> Good, that's fine. So, yeah, I have a, a model Alduin. Um, I know. Um, I know a guy that was stupid enough to buy the um, the Battlefront uh, special edition, and he got early access to the DL44 and some sort of thing. And like he paid like an extra fifteen quid for something that he was gonna unlock like <laughs> within about five hours. <laughs> I mean, At least if you it needs to be exclusive, doesn't it? If you're gonna do a special edition anything, it needs to be exclusive. You need to like so that so people know you've got that special edition. Yeah. Not yeah. not like, you know that's the way that's the way digital's gotta go. It's gotta be something that you've got that you, that everyone wants that you've paid for and no one else can have unless they pay for it. Yeah, as long as it's cosmetic only. I yeah, think well, yeah. 
then you yeah. then you're sort of in the grey area of pay to win. You know, the people who paid special edition get the super weapon. Whereas I, I guess if they get a special skin, I think that's quite cool. So if there's like a certain stormtrooper skin that oh, only the pre-order yeah. people get, that sort of thing. I, think, I like that sort of stuff. I think that's a good idea. The amount of people that would buy the special edition just for the scout trooper. Yeah, definitely. Called. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so sort of backtracking a little bit back to PS now. Then, um, same as you, John. It's something that I sort of debated a little bit, and then now they've got this this trial running for it. I'm really tempted to do it, but I'm still a bit. I'm sort of waiting for a week where I don't have anything to do because mm-hmm. I feel like I need a week to really make the most of the um, the, the sort of the whole trial. Have you been playing Bioshock Infinite? Uh, yes, I've just started off. I'm, never, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I've really weaked out on this. I never, I've never played a Bioshock game to the end. I played Bioshock One uh, for about about an hour and a half, and I think I had to give it back or something. Anyway, I've never actually done the entire Bioshock series. But from what I can see from Bioshock Infinite, I'm really impressed. Although obviously it's not PS4 generation or anything like that, but you know it's it's good. The sounds good. The, the story so far, I think I'm uh, I've just literally like woke up in some sort of water and there's like people singing and stuff and like it's odd. I'm yeah, liking it's really it. Cool. Like see, see it all the way through to the end because the story is really really good. Um, and that's I, what's missing these days. Yeah, me and Phil, um, we used to get really mad about Bioshock. Yeah, I was going to mention that. We used like, to get, so every month we'd get PlayStation Magazine, <laughs> um, and obviously they would be, they'd hype games up and then there'd be the big review. And they um, had the review for Bioshock and gave it 10 out of 10. And we were like, what is it about this game? And they were just constantly going on, and everything was geared towards how amazing Bioshock is. And we never played it. We just it just went over our heads. And we, we did. We played the demo. And, um, and now, now I've played all of them, but I've played them in a really weird order. And I've read the book, actually. <laughs> There's a book I've got, which is okay. how they built Rapture, which is the underground city, which is a really good book. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I've played them. I played Bioshock 2. Then I read the book, which goes all the way back. And then I played Bioshock Infinite, and then I played the first one. <laughs> so I've sort of just done the whole timeline in a really stupid order. Um, <laughs> but the you, I, un, I sort of understand now what the the initial hype was about and the the reviews were about, and the the world of Rapture and just sort of the concepts and the story behind it. It's a really interesting sort of just this completely fleshed out world. The sort of the thought of everything. Um, and what I'd like particularly about Infinite was it's it's the same story, it's the same concept, but it's flipped on its head, and obviously it's the, yeah. in the sky. Uh, which I thought was a really really clever twist. It's um for for considering like I know how many hours I'm going to get out of it, and uh, there's like I said there's over a hundred titles. I mean they've got things like all the dead uh, dead or alive on there, kids that sort of thing. Street Fighter, there's a couple of Street Fighter. I think it's one Street Fighter game on there. Basically, it's like there's something for everyone, um, and it's only going to get better. Mm-hmm. And once this does well, and it will, once it does well, then that will be, they'll start including PS4 titles. I know they're going to. Because they're streaming it. You don't have to have hardware for it. It's streamed directly to your device. On the PlayStation Vita, um, the, one of the reasons why I'm, I, I've just uh, I tweeted to ask PlayStation today to see if that there is a, a yearly subscription for UK residents. There's one for the Americans. It's ninety nine dollars. Um, if there's one for the UK, then I'm pretty certain I'm, I'll take them up on it. Yeah. Um, Twelve ninety nine a month is probably a bit too much for me because yeah. I've got PS4 games to play. But um, you know, if the, if it was like eighty nine quid or seventy quid or something for the year, then yeah. we're talk we're, we're talking them because I can pick it up, put it down wherever I want. Um, and so as long as you've got a, a nice uh, internet connection. PlayStation Vita is the perfect handheld to play these games on. Yeah, um, it's good. Um, it, it'd be good if they sort of combine some deal with PlayStation Plus because obviously people are already playing paying for PlayStation Plus. So yeah, if they could work out some merging of the two in some sort of universal, you pay a hundred pound a year or one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty pound a year, something like that, and you get sort of all of it. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's in its infancy at the minute, so I'm, I'm watching and I'm waiting to see. 
I'm just what looking through the list of games, and some of them, like, there's some pretty awesome, like, little gems in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, even some of the indie games, like Thomas Was Alone. If you've not played that, that's that's a great game. That's really um, good. That's a really good title for the Vita as well, actually, John. If you pick that one up, Thomas Is Alone. Yeah. It's like a, never, a, 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 a platformer, but it's got it's like a really strange story to it as well. Mm-hmm. If there's anything on here, if I've just had a quick look, so to say, but if there's anything on here um, you need to play, it's probably Journey. If you've not played that yet, give that a go. It's a great game. Um, uh, definitely not Kane and Lynch Two Dog Days though. Really? I like I like the original. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, but did you play Two Dog Days? No. It was horrendous. <laughs> was, it, was it as rushed as uh, was it as rushed as Star Wars um oh what's it called? I put it down here. Force Unleashed sure 2. Hey, oh, there, there's a there's a special edition for you. Star Wars the Force Unleashed 2 with the Anakin Skywalker uh, USB pen in it. I picked it up for a fiver. <laughs> nice. But that was I don't know if you played the original Force Unleashed game, but it was awesome, and then they bought Force Unleashed 2 out, and it was about four hours long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way it goes. But yeah, Dog Days, Kane and Lynch 2 was a little bit... It was fun. You know, we ran through, and it was co-op. It was quite quite enjoyable. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly isn't one that... I, I think it was the ending that got me. Like, it just ends. <laughs> uh, well, you, there's there's like whole there's a whole airport scene, <laughs> and you're fighting through this airport, just killing like ten thousand bad guys, and then you run in for this plane, and when you get close enough to the plane, it's just sort of like okay, you got on it and you got away, and that's yeah. the end. Because the police don't have the power to stop a plane from launching or anything like you know. <laughs> that never that, happens. The plane's at the tarmac. That's it. Like the the. the you know, never, <laughs> It's gone at that point. It's yeah. like it was made. It was made on a Friday afternoon or something. That last level was done at like <laughs> half past three on a Friday afternoon. They were just like, just yeah, sack it off now. Let's get to the It's the whole bit <laughs> where you're walking <laughs> around. Nails of this probably one of the tutorial levels that like you build like the first thing. It's like put a plane here, move it here. It's like <laughs> we'll use that for the last level of our game. It'll be amazing. That's some right great games on there. Borderlands Two. All the Assassin's Creeds. Yeah, it's definitely. I think it's probably worth a look. I'll you've got to be. Go. You've got to be careful though, because the things that are in the subscription aren't necessarily all of them. Ah. So, because I've got, I've come to a game and thought, oh, oh awesome, yeah. I'll play that, and it was like, yeah, rent two pound forty nine for four days, or, um, mm. you know, seven pound for thirty days. It's like, well, no, because I can just go and buy Assassin's Creed two for two pound fifty and play it on my PS three. So. And own the game, so you're not going to get me on that one. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's it's infancy, so we'll see what happens. But it's worth the trial. Just make sure you cancel it before your seven days drop, otherwise you start getting charged. Mhm. So that sort of brings us nicely in a bit of a segue. You've mentioned Assassin's Creed there, um, and the news that came out this week, um, or sort of the end of last week, that there's no Assassin's Creed game this year. I don't know if you saw that. They've, they've come out and said. Gonna- yeah, there's not going to be an Assassin's Creed game. 2017 will be the next release. I think that they are going to do their usual... I think there's actually one coming out this week, um, which makes me laugh. <laughs> but it's it's one of the smaller sort of... It's the, the, the indie game, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like um, Assassin's Creed Rogue came out last year. I think it's that sort of thing. Um, okay. But sort of the mainstream Assassin's Creed 12 or whatever it'll be... Um, <laughs> Isn't going to come out until 2017, which I think is, is a great decision. The I'm right glad. Thing. Very good. Probably glad. three games too late, but yeah, yeah, they're finally clocked on that they can't yes. keep yeah. smashing. Well, hopefully, by the sounds of that, it's almost like they've got enough time to like almost rebuild the engine and like mm-hmm. really recreate the game. So that alone, I'm actually kind of excited for that already. Because that that to me sounds like what they've been needing to do for a while. Mm-hmm. Since since Unity, I think Unity they should have just packed it up. They should have realised it hadn't worked, and and sacked it off. Then I'm glad. I'm glad of that news because yeah. it needs a break. It needs a break. Otherwise, people are just going to go. It's like Call of Duty. Call of Duty needs a break. Definitely needs a break. Um, yes. Just because it it's needs, what, it needs a bullet in the brain that does. 
to be honest. But... What, 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 else can, what else can you do? I mean, I'm sure, like, when they say, right, guys, we're going to create Call of Duty 15 now. Uh, right, get, get, your, get your, your ideas down on the whiteboard. What do you think? And everyone's just like... Jump More futuristic yeah. yeah, like... Cyber <laughs> dogs. Uh... <laughs> With robots and stuff. We'll do no, yeah, what, what Call of Duty needs to do is go backwards. They need to go back in time and do sort of some... Call of Duty Napoleonic Wars. Exactly. But, <laughs> but, they, but then they can be a bit more creative and they can do something that people don't expect. Whereas if it's just, oh yeah, so we're going to make, you know, Advanced Warfighter Ghosts 2, whatever. It's just going to Tur- be... Turbo, Turbo Extreme 3. Yeah. Hyper, hyper edition. Yeah, sixty-five <laughs> quid for the base game and eighty quid for the one that comes with a dog. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, and they've got, they've really got to sort of step it back. And I think Ubisoft have, have I wouldn't even say it's that bold of a thing. It's just common sense. You know, yes. just stop and think. Syndicate say, was good. I might say it was, was had really good reviews, which surprised. Yeah. You know, I don't think many people particularly expected it to. Uh, no. but that's been really well rated. So maybe they've just sort of counted their blessings and thought, right, that was a good game. Now we can stop. And you know, have you have you guys played Syndicate? No. Right. Uh, basically, the what the reason it did so well is because it did what Assassin's Creed does best, and that's it. It was a typical Assassin's Creed game, whereas Unity tried to reinvent the wheel and failed. Plus, it's buggy, glitchiness, and full of crap. But Syndicate was, it was uh, steady, it was, well, you know, it, it was just Assassin's Creed. It was it was the same as every other Assassin's Creed, it's what everyone wanted. But I don't know about that. <laughs> when, I, uh, well, when you say it's a typical Assassin's Creed game, do you mean following a bellend for an hour down a road? Yes. For, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's typical, and you start so building, annoying. and you start... And you start building up the city, and you start hiring, like you know, the prostitutes to do it. It's just standard stuff. It's a stand. Like if you've played a, any of the Ezio series, which in my opinion yes. the best, yeah. Assassin's Creed Two to Revelations, best, because the IP needed no adjustment. It worked, you know. And okay, it was pretty much the same game, but the story continued. Dead, like Desmond's whole story, but it's just the same, and it works. And now that they've cut it off, then they've done a, they've done an absolute, they've done the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. No one's gonna buy the next one. I still think the first one's the best, to be honest. Like I know that's not a very popular choice, but I, I prefer um, Altair and the sort of the medieval and the crusader. Like See, I've got revelations. Re- revelations work for me because I got a bit of I got a, a lot of Etsy and I got a lot of Altair as well. So I got the I got the two. Yeah. No, and um, I think a big thing that Syndicate. Again, it was quite. This was a bold choice. Stuff, but Syndicate, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have any multiplayer in it. It's single player. In it. No, no. There's no. There's no. Uh, the multiplayer was never its strong point. It was always, in my opinion, more of a bolt on. Yeah, um, I think. I think I they, the play, they they hit a really good. They got a really good thing. You know, it was. A, I think the multiplayer was really quite original and it worked. Yeah. But then they couldn't scale it in any way, and it just became the same multiplayer in each game. Because mm-hmm. you played it quite a lot, didn't you, Phil? Yeah, like I mean, well, to get the um, platinum for Black Flag, I had to play it fucking loads, like hours. Um, but I at first I thought it would be like a bit of a punishment, but I actually started to enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it, it gets a bit like even though it is the same in all of them, even just playing it in one, it gets quite repetitive quite quick. Like you know, there's only so much you can do in it that's quite fun. It's like oh yeah, I just managed to get this awesome kill. And it's like and I did it again and again and again. Um, but like I ended up basically kind of cheating to get the trophy because I got a bit bored of it. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think as you say, it's, it was a really original idea. I quite liked it. I like to see, like, it's it's nice to see um, a game company like that create a bit of an original multiplayer game. Yeah. Um, same with Last of Us. Last of Us multiplayer, like to me, that is a very original concept, and I think that's amazing. And I like it when games do that. Um, I speaking that's... of Last of Us, um, that's quite a nice little segue into some art to talk about, um, and it's what. 
uh, you probably noticed I've been playing a lot recently, and that's the Uncharted Remastered Edition. Um, and one thing I, I took away, so I've just platinumed the first game. Um, I got that yet. Hey. Um, <laughs> That that is such a fun game. Um, I always thought Uncharted Two is my favourite, but you know I'm going through Uncharted Two now. But the first one really is just such a solid game. It's such a solid experience, and it's so well paced. You know, you, there's no boring moments in the entire game. Um, I, on Saturday, I finished it on brutal. Uh, sorry, on um, crushing, which is sort of the hardest difficulty you need for the trophy list um, and then went through and got all the trophies and basically just did the entire game again you know, running through each chapter um, and one thing I did notice which I hadn't ever really noticed before is the relationship between um, Nate and um, so, Eleanor is it Eleanor? yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that shows how much I pay attention to it. Um, <laughs> the, the relationship between those two is very similar to the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Is it Joel and Ellie from Last of Us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, the sort of mechanic between the two of them, because obviously Naughty Dog, you know, it, it, both, yeah, yeah. It, both their games, so I never really realised how much of an influence that those sort of characters had on the characters in Last of Us, and I'd be interested now to go back and play The Last of Us and sort of see how similar they are to, to Nate and Eleanor. Well, there's one big difference. It'd be a bit weird if it was the exact same relationship. <laughs> well, <laughs> it would be a bit weird. But no, I, I see what you mean. So it's kind of the whole like love hate thing, isn't it? Like at first, they kind of they just. They, they want to stay completely away from each other, don't want to see each other, and then by the end of it, um, they absolutely adore each other. So, yeah, yeah and they, they're yeah, fighting for each other. And, yeah. and But then even down to the way, so, like, that they move in the environment. So, obviously, the way Ellie moves and she goes between cover and does certain things is very similar to the way you, you sort of, the other half of you in, in Uncharted does. So it was just interesting to notice that. Something that obviously Uncharted, the first one, came out you know, a long, long time ago. Um, I don't know the exact year it came out, but they've obviously stuck to that certain formula all the way through, and it would be interesting to see in March when Uncharted 4 comes out whether we have a, another sort of dynamic between Nate and another character, which we might do, because from the latest trailer sort of teaser that came out, he's married you know, he's got a wedding ring on, so he sort of makes a point of, you know, I'm married, and whether that was genuine or not, I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see if they keep that sort of male-female duo going. But I'm, I'm, as I said in one of the other podcasts, I'm so sick of the Uncharted game being about him and her not being together at the start, and then slowly coming back together. Because, like, they break up in between the first and second. And then they break up again between the third, like second and third. It's like they can't do that again. They can't. But more than anything, um, like whatever the fourth game does, it just can't do what they did in three, which is build the game around um, the massive. Um, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, they can't build the story around the huge game mechanics. Mechanics, that's the word I'm after. Yeah. Um, like they did in three, because that absolutely ruined the game for me. Like it was terrible. I, I don't know if I mentioned it in a podcast before, but there's basically like in three, there's this whole thing about the boat um, where you know you, you're basically going after Sully because Sully's been kidnapped. So you go on this boat and there's this whole part of the story where there's this boat sinking and like it is quite cool, but then they literally just go oh, okay, you get thrown in the water and you happen to wash back up on the shore where you were and you just happen to find out that it wasn't Sully on the boat, it's fine. All of that story is just completely irrelevant. It was literally just to make you go through this game mechanic. And, like, they did it with so many parts. Like, the whole thing in the desert is, like, on the plane where you're wandering around. It was kind of cool but completely fucking irrelevant to the story. And it just ruined it. Whereas 1 and 2... You can tell they built it a lot more around the story. So as long as they do that in four, I'm happy. 
I'm going to stop ranting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's what I mean, sort of with the first one and playing that sort of recently. The the pacing of it's just perfect. There's no, so there's no point in which it dies down, but then it's not exactly constant action. You know, there are the odd puzzle and that sort of thing. Whereas three, as you say, there are these sections where they've tried to be a bit too cinematic and showing off with what they've done technically and they've sort of left the story out. Um, so I hope, yeah, I mean, I've got big expectations for four. You know, and hopefully that's that's going to be sort of a, a big title and one of probably the biggest titles of the year, but especially in this first sort of half of the year. Um, Uncharted came out in 2007. Oh, I was going to guess 2006. And uh, in fact, yeah, because so the PS3 came out in 2007, didn't it? It came out in March 2007. Um, and then Uncharted came out that December. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that was one of the first PlayStation 3 games to have a trophy list as well. I remember. Um, because I can remember we got it and we played it and a trophy pinged and it was like this whole new thing. We didn't know what it was and it was, oh, that's so cool. And obviously they're three, I'm thinking I'm 3,200 and something trophies later. I finally finished Uncharted as a, as a list. I was actually debating going back and playing the PS3 version and Platinum getting all the trophies in that as well because it's just such a fun game to get all the trophies in. It's on PS now if you want to. <laughs> yeah. you, you've not played them, have you, John? You've not. No. <laughs> but spo- spo- spoiler alert. <laughs> <it>. No. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I, I, I know, definitely recommend. I know I probably, it. I know I probably should have, and uh, I had to go on Uncharted Three, um, and yeah, it was good. It just didn't. I, I didn't feel. I think there was other games that were happening at the same time. I just didn't feel the love for it. But I'm pretty certain I'm going to pick up this. Uh, remastered collection and go through it one at a time. It was like when the Mass Effect collection came out, like, you know, I, I started with number two and then I played number three and then I bought the collection and bought, played one, two and three in sync and then I just absolutely adored it. So, yeah, I think, I think I'll probably go down that route. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. And you, there's got, like, speed run modes and that sort of thing. And it like yeah. it tracks how quick you can get through the game and there's this whole, there's a lot of stuff to do that's not, that's not just single player. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I grabbed the um, remastered edition over Christmas in one of the daily deals. I think yeah. it was twenty-five quid for all three, so it was you know it was an absolute steal. I um, I looked at it, but uh, I actually got um, I had some uh, Amazon. I got some Amazon vouchers for Christmas, which I then exchanged for PlayStation credit through Amazon, which they just send you a code on the email, and then I got PS credit. Um, I, just, I want to quickly talk to you about this because it's um, it's it's a real. Um, like uh, I can say it. it's like a proper um, dark horse in, in in the games, and you probably you probably seen it, but you probably thought, nah, we'll have a look. But I bought Mad Max. Okay. Right, and I'm I'm telling you now, like when I first got it, I thought, okay, it's it's Mad Max. I've just watched Fury Road. I like Fury Road. I'll get it. It looks it looks kind of cool. I'll get it. I'm telling you now, it's amazing. It's amazing. I don't know if you've played it, but I personally think it is epic. Especially if you play it to the the, the the movie soundtrack as well, oh, it's, it's incredible. Like, it's a good it's a good like 25, 30 hour game if you if you do everything the correct way. You could go straight through it and still the story missions, but if you build up your car and like get the better engines and stuff, and that the car combat is just incredible. But I, I I saw it and I thought, yeah, I've heard about that. But I've not really heard a lot. It hasn't been hyped at all, but. It's amazing, and if you if you find it cheap, if it's like because I got it for like twenty quid or something, if you find it cheap on digital or, or in hard copy for twenty quid or less, buy it because it's a it's a whole lot of fun. And that's yeah, all. I, that's all. Yeah. I, that's all I got to say. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let any story or anything, but that's all I got to say about that. But it's a whole a whole bunch of fun. Well, that's surprising because um, like film to game adaptations usually are the biggest pile of wank. Like. They are the kind of go-to game for me. If I ever want to think of a crap game, I'll always try and think mm. of a, a film-to-game adaptation. But, um, this yeah, just isn't. This this just isn't it. It's got so much depth, um, and you grind to get better bits for your car. Um, and like I said, it, if you if you couple it up with the the movie soundtrack and you play it a side by side, <laughs> it proper it proper rushes you out. Like it's awesome. I can't I can't really I can't really bore off it anymore really because it's just 
you've just got to play it. Like I don't want to give anything away because it's quite a tight story as well. I haven't actually finished it yet. I've got about probably another three or four missions to go. Um, but if there was ever a game I'm going to platinum until I saw what the actual platinum list was, then it was probably going to be that. And then I had I saw the the actual platinum trophy objective, and I just thought I don't like it that much. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the film. Um, this is mental. So, would you recommend playing the game or watching the film first? Watch the film. Watch the film first. Definitely watch the film. Right. Um, remember how? We, uh, remember how um, I got the, uh, the Google Cardboard equivalent yeah. thing that I got? Well, I managed to, to somehow get a side by side 3D copy of the film, which I could probably distribute. Send you yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Dis- <laughs> maybe not distribute, but uh, show t- show to you at some point. Yeah. Um, that was a first, that, I watched it in 3D first, and it was awesome. Um, but the film itself, it's... I've, I've never really watched the Mad Maxes before. Um, I mean, I've seen a few... I saw Thunderdome, Tina Turner and that, but um, it's a good story. It's a good story, and it's easy to watch, and it's uh, it's a, a good combination of the actors as well, to be fair. I just... Yeah, I'll, I'll, see, I'll see what I can do. I've, I've got the... Um, I've got the Blu-ray, the actual... 2D copy, but I've also got a 3D copy that I could possibly show to you at some point. Cool. Yeah. For your, for your like, review. It looks like my kind of thing, you know, it's crazy action and post-apocalyptic and it's yeah. all, you know, sort of... Tick- the colours. It's the colours and that's something that the game carries over to the games as well. The skybox in Mad Max is out of this world. I mean, Battlefront's good, Destiny was good, but it just makes... Destiny looks just like a, like a colouring book now compared to the, some of the games that are out there. Battlefield right. has amazing skyboxes. Uh, sorry, Battlefront has amazing skyboxes, but Mad Max has the best. Uh, it's just it's like got top top gear, sort of dark blue to light blue, and then yellow sand, and it's just contrasty, and it just yeah. puts you in. It, it's easy just to just neck a few beers off, play the game for about six hours straight, not be any further on because you've just been grinding to get your car. It's like uh, what's what? Give me a game where uh, you have it's got a massive map. And then you have to like liberate certain parts of the map. Oh, I cried me... Yes, exactly. So it's exactly <laughs> like so it's exactly like a similar sort of concept, except you're driving everywhere and you've got to you've got to keep your water intake going because you start getting thirsty and you get a bit you know lethargic. You've got to keep your, your car fueled up as well. So it's not just like this car just drives forever. You've got to like find fuel for it and get it yeah. topped up. And... That sounds yeah. That sounds like my cup of tea. Um, yeah. Mentioned Far Cry then. If either of you guys played Blood Dragon, the sort of Far Cry three. <laughs> yeah, isn't that like a neon? A, is that like Far Cry three on pills? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I started playing that recently because I noticed it was free on the store for PS Plus. But like even one of those random ones they just sort of throw in. Um, oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. When was that? You'd be able to grab it from my download list. Um, but I started playing it, and that oh, game is crazy. Like, I need to play it a bit. <laughs> they, I need to. They, they've sort of taken something... Obviously, Far Cry 3 worked, and that was good, arguably better than Far Cry 4. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I'd agree with that. They've just sort of made, made it this, like... It's sort of like the Deadpool of the comic books. It's the game that pokes fun at itself. So at the start... In the tutorial, it basically comes up with like what how what to do. And the guy lands on the beach, um, and then the guy, the, the commander on the intercom says to him, "Okay, we've disabled your suit. You need to do the tutorial to activate everything." And then he just starts like swearing his head off, <laughs> like the guy you're playing as does. And it's like, "Okay, use the left stick to look around." And then he's just like, ah, oh, he's swearing, swearing away. And you have to either, like look around the left stick, and then it's like to make yourself to to put some distance between you and the ground, um, and before shortly returning again, press X, and it's like press X to jump. And he's just like, again, he's just swearing, like I just want to go <laughs> there. and like he walks you through all these tiny little things, and it's yeah, it's just poking fun at like really stupid tutorials. But the whole game's sort of got the same vibe to it. It's just poking fun at like stupid games, basically. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance to play it. It's, if you like Far Cry 3, definitely play it. And the soundtrack, again, it's it's got like a Hotline Miami type soundtrack. Yeah. Like, 
ne neon sort of 80s uh, special. Yeah. yeah, it's a really, really like great soundtrack, and the colours, it's all like super neon, like, yeah, it's mental. Um, will, will you be buying Primal? Uh, is it, yeah, is it, is it I'm definitely interested in that. that like, that was one why? of the games I picked to look forward to. That's, that's why. I'm not saying I'm not interested in it. I've, I've stayed away from the hype because I, I hyped myself with Far Cry 4, which was well, good. That's the but... thing. I don't really know anything about it other than like one the like very first kind of teaser there at least. But just how much I enjoy the Far Cry games and the fact yeah. that it's just a whole different take on the Far Cry games. I'm just really intrigued as to what they're going to do with it. Like, it might be the biggest part of crap, but I'm I'm just excited to see what it could be because I'm hoping. It you know, be. you know, it would be a good looking big part of crap though. It is a big part. Of yeah, it still look awesome <laughs> because they, they do. <laughs> I've I've watched quite there's quite a bit of uh, gameplay on YouTube now, and one thing that has sort of come out is there's a, I think there's about twelve different animals you can tame. And you can sort of have one of them at a time as a companion with you. So you could have like a grizzly bear with you or a saber-toothed tiger with you or an eagle. Or I think there's a certain character oh, cool. animals. And you just sort of, similar to what you did in 4, you know, when you'd throw the bait in and the tiger would go. Mm. You can do the same sort of thing, but you control this animal. So you can be a bit more, okay, go and get that guy and that guy and that guy while I spear these other ones. Um I don't think it's going to look too much different than what we've already got. I think it'll have its own unique style, because all, all Far Cry's do. Um, but I don't think the actual uh, IP will change much. No. But I don't think it needs to. No, no, that's it. It's not. It's definitely not broken. Um, mm. and it might be nice not to, uh, you know, go running in with Uzis and whatever they are, UP44. So. <laughs> yeah. Ch chucking spears for a change might be a bit of a, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Yeah, so from what I've seen, the weapons are sort of bows and arrows with different types of arrow, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, and spears, and then obviously like hand-to-hand -hand, like clubs and machetes and something, yeah, pokey bits. That should be cool. Um, so okay, so one more bit of news I'd, I'd written down, um, and it's it's then just basically the next step in an ongoing saga of will it, won't it. Um, and it's about Half-Life 3. <laughs> oh, come on. Basically, <laughs> they've released a statement, um, and then I think just before Christmas, or maybe this side of the new year, the main writer of the Half-Life games, so the guy who wrote Half-Life 1 and 2, has retired. <laughs> well, it has, he has been working for about 25 years. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, surely he's not been working because there's a serious lack of the fucking game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I assume he's been doing other things, yeah. but the point is the the got sort of the main focal point, and the guy who wrote the games doesn't work for Valve anymore. He's retired, so it's sort of like another nail in the coffin. Even you know, if it wasn't already completely sealed shut, buried, and you know, forgotten so about. I don't. I don't think it was because I think the fans kept it alive. Uh, Half Life One for me was a very special game. Two reasons: one, because it was epic, and it was the first time when, especially when you went up against the Marines, and I think the missions called "We've Got Our Styles." Uh, they actually have some form of AI, which was awesome. I've never seen it before. Secondly, because my my PC could run it yeah. on lowest <laughs> on, on lowest res, but it could run it, and I was I was well happy. It was like pixelated goodness, like the original Quake. Um, Half-Life 2, I think I played on a console, and that was awesome. That was awesome as well. And it's got such a fan base and such a following. Why wouldn't you make another game? It's been so long. People are screaming for it. It's been so many change.org, like, petitions and millions of people signing them. And, like, who, how can they not think that this is going to be a moneymaker for them? If anything... I think that's exactly it, though. Like, if there's one company in the world that doesn't need money, it's Valve. You know, they they don't have to make it. They don't. Obviously, they'd make it for the fans, but why risk making a game that potentially going to be a bit crappy? Because in its days, you say like Half Life came out, and there was a there was a gap in the market for a first person shooter. Oh, well, yeah, just, just. story. 
Whereas mm -hmm. now it's like, what can they do now that's really that different to everything else you see? Didn't yeah. didn't didn't Half Life then breed Team Fortress, which it then turned bred Counter Strike? Am I am I am I a wrong genus there? No, Counter Strike. I think Counter Strike came first, so Counter Strike yeah. and the Half Life mod, and then I'm sure Team Fortress came first. Yeah, I don't know. I have to I have to check that. But yeah, they, yeah. they are part. They are part of the same IP, though, aren't they? Well, yeah. the, or they were. Or they were originally. Yeah. Yeah. They're ba I know. I know. I'm not sure about Team Fortress, but I know Counter Strike is just a mod of Half Life, so it's mm. it's the same engine and everything. Um, and then it became its own entity, obviously once it gained popularity. But yeah, I don't. I just don't think with everything Valve do. So obviously Steam, for a start, makes billions and billions and billions every year. Um, and then the other games they've got. So you've got your obviously your Portals and you Left for Dead. Yeah. And then your Team Fortress and that sort of thing that's sort of spun off. They don't, I mean, I don't see why they'd risk making a Half-Life, especially in the current environment of, I mean, do we really need another first-person shooter? Yeah. Like, yeah, I suppose. Granted, they'll do things differently, and again, so as you say, with the first one, they sort of, that was quite a revolutionary game. And then with the second one, they really hit the physics side of things. And yeah. And the first game where you could pick things up and throw them and spin them. Gravity and, gun. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah. They made a tool within the game to show off that side of stuff, and that mm -hmm. was you know, that was quite impressive and amazing. But now I don't really see what they would do unless unless at some point this year they release some crazy virtual reality Half Life Three that they've been making, and they just completely blow Oculus and HTC Vive and all the other ones out of the water because. Really, Valve nailed VR three years ago, and have made yeah. like this amazing game for it. Um, but I don't see why. I, they would, I don't. I just. I, think, I don't see why they'd risk it. It's going to be fan service, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. It's going to be pure, purely going to be fan service. Um, if that's not a good enough reason to make a game, then they won't, they're not going to sacrifice the hundreds of millions of dollars or pounds or whatever it is to make one just for fan service. Yeah, exactly. Like again, they don't need to make a return. They could, they could make it and never make a penny off it. They could give it away, and they, they're not exactly going to go bankrupt. No. But I don't. I just don't see why they'd risk, especially as I say, with the current environment of every other game is a first-person shooter with physics and and stuff. I just don't see what they can do different at the moment. Are you getting sick of first-person shooters? That's a question. Absolutely. To both, to both of you. Yeah, so, I've been sick of them for a while. Like, um, probably like since the third Call of Duty came out. No, well, I mean, um, after Modern Warfare, like Modern Warfare Two, like it was around yeah. that point. I was a bit like, okay, they they kind of need to be a bit more original now. And it's like however many years later, and they're still churning them out. But it's just such a an easy game to make. It's the easiest way of making mm. a game. Like, very linear, very, mm, very scripted. Like the typical low cost to create, highest like selling, biggest profit. So I think a, bit, a lot. A bit, a bit like FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think for me, like I'm not sick of first person shooters. I'm just sick of serious first person shooters. So ones yeah. that try to make themselves like super serious, whereas. One game I played last year I really enjoyed was Wolfenstein, uh, the New Order. Yeah. That's a great that game. Mm. And that's just, it's just nonsense. You know, it's Nazis win the war and they, they build buildings out of super concrete and have a lunar base. And you go up to the lunar base and kill all the Nazis on the moon and then come back down. And, you know, and it's, it's just nonsense. But it, it's because they don't focus on making it serious, they instead focus on making it fun. Based on based on that, though, I've got another question for you. you. Sort of fell into my little spider web trap. What about Doom? See, I want to play it. I've I've not played it, and I've watched some things for it. And I had I got my copy of the New Order. Um, so you got the, you got beta, beta access when it comes. But yeah, well, I've I've had it pre-owned, um, and the code I thought the code's useless. It's, it's obviously been taken. Oh no. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, again, I'm interested in that because that is just. It's fast-paced carnage. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not sort of your battlefields and your Call of Duties, where it's about, you know, 
super serious, Seri- quite yeah. political, quite current affair issues. You know, it's it's aliens and Mars. You know, it's not it's crazy. What, what about the um, Borderlands series? Which is, I've got another point to make on roughly on that in a minute. But what did you think of Borderlands Two? Oh, I really liked it. Yeah, it's great. Did game. you play it? Did you play it on the Vita? Yeah. And would you say it's as enjoyable on the Vita as it is on, uh, say, if I bought the Handsome Collection, for example? Um, well, um, so I've I've owned it on PS3, PS. I got the Handsome Collection and I got it on the Vita, so I've sort of owned all three versions of it, and I think it is as enjoyable, but it's certainly clunkier, and the fl- the frame rate's pretty dire with it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed playing it. You know, I. I, the thing that I enjoyed most about it is I didn't have to start a new character, so I just you could just up. import. Yeah, I yeah. had my assassin uh, zero on the PS3, mm-hmm. played with that on the Vita for a bit, um, kept going, got the handsome collection, and then put him on the PS4. So I, you know, I at no point have I had to start a new character just because I bought a, for a different version of the thing of. of um, a different console, so I think that's a really impressive thing that more games should really be looking to do. So, I've, on, on the whole Borderlands vibe, uh, I bought uh, Tales of the Borderlands, um, and maybe being something. My cat. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, Based based on based on the Borderlands, uh, <laughs> are you ter- he's totally throwing me now. That door's supposed to be shut. Sure. <laughs> Tales, Tales of the Borderlands. Yeah, based on on ta- Tales of the Borderlands, um, and something that probably we should probably talk about next uh, next time because I'm conscious about the time is uh, sort of games, uh, epi- episodic games. Right. Um, I've played Tales of the Borderlands, and uh, it's faithful to the Borderlands world, and I would definitely recommend, if you haven't played it, I think it's okay. quite cheap at the minute for the entire series, to have a go. But yeah. we'll cover that. I'll, I'll put that as a topic to next time, yeah. and we'll, we'll cover yeah. that, because I've, I've played a lot of them, Game of Thrones, uh, um, definitely the Walking Dead series. Mm. So yes. We'll go into that. But Wolf Among Us. Great game. Without, without a doubt. Where's number two? Where's Wolf Among Us number two? I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Th- there will be one. Just have faith. Have, yeah, have faith. Exactly. Just, just like a playable Ewok character in Battlefront. Just like Half Life Three. Yeah, yeah. Just like Half Life Three. And Firefly. And... If you make enough memes about it, <laughs> anything can come true. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the rule of the internet these days? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. When you wish upon a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I mean, if you guys got any news we haven't covered yet, I think um, I'm out. There's the very pointless news that I think a lot of people don't actually care about, but um, they managed to install Linux on PS4. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, anyway. I saw that. But I, I don't get it. Like, why? Who gives a crap? Why? <laughs> like, I, one of the things that people keep saying is like, um, you can install Steam OS, and I can kind of understand the concept of like, you buy PS4. And then you basically bought yourself a cheaper Steam machine, so you can install uh, Steam OS on it. But I'd rather have a PS4 than Steam OS, and just use my PC yeah. for Steam. Like, I, yeah. I don't. It's not worth it in any way, shape, or form. It's but, one of them. It's one of them. If we can do it, we will. Things. Yeah. It's like we've done it because we can, not because it's actually useful. I yeah. think. Can you? So, sort of the question of that is like, can it be dual booted or whatever the term is? Um, I or don't know how they managed nice to do it, but I imagine that's kind of the goal, and that I would definitely understand more. Yeah. But then, with the size of the hard drives on a PS4, like I guess you you definitely need to improve that for it to be worth it, because then you're splitting that in two for like the, or however you want to partition it, but like you're gonna have to use so much of that hard drive space on the operating system and the games for it that you've suddenly got so much less for your PlayStation. So, like, I just, I don't know. It's not worth it. It's because um, they're trying to achieve the dream of Chappie. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Seven PS4s, you can create a supercomputer. Yes. Of course. Yeah, have you seen Chappie, John? 
No, yeah, it's something. I've, I've got the basic gist of it. It looks quite good. It's, it's oh, one. It's, it's one of the it's just the references of the bit in that way. They they put a load of PS4s together and make a supercomputer because that's how. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the best product placement I've ever seen. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So um, we could probably wrap up about that. If sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just cool. basically, so... I've 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 recently just kicked out another video on Degenerate Gamers. You've gone YouTube, uh, or you can tweet me at Degenerate Gamers. Um, you can sit with me for 40 minutes and listen to me talk shit about uh, Fire Squadron. It's a uh, you can see me pulling off some neat tricks, but uh, yeah, check it out if you if you're watching. Always go to that. That's me. Well, we've put out a few videos in the past two weeks or whatever it's been. Um, but yeah, again, so Rec Media on YouTube. Um, check them out. Yeah, and uh, then media.com as well. Um, you find a bit more about about us and what we do. Um, and yeah, so head over to recmedia.com. You've got Rec Media on YouTube, and you've also got Degenerate Gamers on YouTube. Plenty of content. So see you there. Bye. That mistake the other day. <laughs> I just used it up anyway. like instantly. Oh, brilliant.